In December of 2019, I got the idea in my head to build a boat with a family. I thought it would make a nice Christmas gift, a kit sitting underneath the tree on Christmas morning. But a few YouTube videos later of the process and I was talked out of it. Then in March of 2020, COVID-19 forced everybody to stay at home. And three months into two weeks of flattening the curve, I decided to revisit the idea and I bought a passage maker dinghy from Chesapeake Lightcraft, the kit. The company's in Annapolis, Maryland, and they make all kinds of wonderful kits, or you can just buy the plans. I don't have a lot of experience with woodworking or tools, so I bought everything pre-cut, which cost a little bit more money, but it was well worth the price. At this stage of the game, we're assembling all the planks, stitching them together with copper wire. And here we're putting together the bulkhead, gluing it together. And this is the take apart model, so we're actually going to build a double bulkhead for the forward section. And there's a piece of cardboard in between that will be sawed through. Now at this point, the boat is a basket. It's like a loosely weaved basket. It's not epoxy together. It's only held together by these copper wires, and it was quite a bit of uh, a little bit nerve wracking flipping it over and then lifting it and putting it on the sawhorses upside down. I was just so worried that it would fall apart. So here we have to go through an epoxy after we get all of the copper wires just right and I'm convinced that the boat is straight. I'm epoxying all of the planks together. Once the epoxy is cured, it's time to put down our first layer of fiberglass on the hull. That was fun. I'd never done fiberglass before. A little bit nerve-wracking. Didn't go on perfectly, but I wasn't too worried about it because I knew I was going to paint the hull. Well, here we've got it flipped over again, and I'm epoxying the inside. Here my son and I are assembling the centerboard trunk. And it's time to lay a coat of fiberglass on the inside of the hull. More fun more boo-boos, more mistakes that is, but again I wasn't overly concerned because I knew I was going to paint it. So with the fiberglass cured, it's time to start applying several more coats of epoxy to the interior of the hole, lots of sanding in between, and now we're assembling the bulkheads. Uh, a lot of the little holes for the copper stitching became clogged with epoxy of course, so we had to redrill the little holes for the copper wire so we could stitch the bulkheads to the hull. Our rear bulkhead here is already filleted in place with the epoxy mixed with wood flour. Lots and lots of sand. It was hard to keep sandpaper in stock for this project. And pretty soon we're going to attach the skag. I forewent the screws. Uh, I was too worried that they wouldn't align as I drilled them through the through the hole and instead I epoxied the whole thing in place and held it together until it cured with tie downs. This is assembling the mast and spars inside the shed where it was a little bit cooler. And here we're filleting the the uh, skids on the bottom of the hull and now we're putting epoxy on the rudder and the rudder head assembly. I used a router that's been sitting in my father's garage since I was about 14 years old. Um, he gave that to me when I was 14 because I enjoyed woodshop in junior high school. And it's been sitting there for 40 plus years and finally I got to use it on this boat. Here we're cutting it in half. There we go. It's now two pieces and a little bit easier to handle and maneuver as we continue with the installation. They were routering the mast, putting a nice clean round over on the corners. We enjoy playing with the slow mo on the iPhone for the shot.
making it nice and smooth. And this is actually the spars, I believe. So we're using a planing tool to get the corners, to round off the corners. More iPhone slow-mo here. And now we're into the shed to apply the uh, epoxy and varnish. Several coats. And the boat is really looking good. Just so proud of the color. It's a shame to paint it. It was just so darn pretty. But to hide a few boo-boos, I decided to go ahead and, and paint it. This is the primer, which turned out to be unnecessary. It took a long time to dry, and then sand, I could have gone without it. So if you're thinking about building one of these boats, skip the primer, go straight to the bright sides paint. So we're going to flip the boat over here and paint the interior. And I skipped the primer and went straight to the Interlux paint. We used an off-white, and I was very happy with the way that it went on. The finish looks fantastic. There's no rolling marks. There's no brush marks. Really clean, shiny factory finish. We did sand lightly between each coat. Carefully maneuvering the hole. I was so worried it would drop and break. My, my carefulness paid off and only dropped it once, maybe twice. Okay, so now uh, the, the primer on the hole, the bottom of the hole, is finally dried and we've sanded it and now we're applying our Interlux Bright Side Forest Green. Now doing the front section of the boat, which is small enough to work on inside the shed where it's a little bit cooler. We did this during the middle of the summer where the temperatures reached as high as 120 degrees. Here we go. All the parts are completed and I'm installing the, the standing and running rigging. I've rigged up my sail on the spar and the boom and she's looking good. I'm really happy with this. But it's time to put her away for the night and then give her one more look. One more look-see in the daylight before we take her out for her maiden voyage. So here she is on the trailer down in Marina Del Rey. And here I am cruising around on my little creation, my passage maker dinghy. Thank you for watching.